Hello everyone, this is Showtime 112. Marmaduke Thomas Pattle, usually known by his nickname Pat, was born in South Africa in 1914. Initially forgotten, this amazing fighter race is only now getting the recognition he deserves. Due to the circumstances of his last deployment, his exact number of aerial victories is not officially documented. Pattle fought in Greece and soon after his death, British forces pulled out of the country. Many records, including those of his squadron number 33, were destroyed, so a lot of his victories had to be reconstructed from diaries and memories of people who served with him. He is believed to have achieved about 50 kills altogether, while some sources suggest the score might be higher. That makes him the most successful Western Allied ace of World War II. Pattle first applied for the South African Air Force as early as 1932, but very few candidates were needed and he was rejected. His next chance came in 1936 when Royal Air Force was going through an expansion program. He was initially given a short service commission and after completing his training in 1937, he was assigned to number 80 squadron equipped with Gloucester Gladiator biplanes. The squadron was then deployed to Egypt and Paddle soon experienced real combat when he was sent on a detachment duty to Palestine. British armed forces were suppressing an Arab rebellion, and Paddle flew mostly recon missions, but occasionally he was called to strafe rebel positions. Paddle returned to Egypt, and after the Italian declaration of war, his squadron was given the task of defending Alexandria. Their home base was Amria, and they had 22 gladiators and one single Hurricane Mark I. Pattle first encountered the enemy on 22nd of June 1940, when during the early morning hours, Italians launched their first night bombing raid on Alexandria. One of the Savoia Marchetti SM-81 bombers was caught in a searchlight, but the gladiator pilot soon lost sight of it and couldn't find it anymore. Pattle and his flight were then detached to Sidi Barani, closer to the Libyan border, and only a few hours after their arrival, the gladiators patrolled across the border and spotted an Italian supply column. They strafed the trucks, destroying and damaging a number of them. On 4th of August 1940, Pattle would finally get a chance to show his true skills against enemy aircraft. His flight was asked to escort a Lysander from No. 208 Squadron on an observation mission across the border at Bir Taib El Essem, about 30 miles inside Libya. Pattle led a flight of four gladiators piloted by Flying Officer Peter Wickham Barnes, Flying Officer Johnny Lancaster and Sergeant Kenneth Rue. They took off at 5.15 pm and then found the Lysander at 6,000 feet. Wickham Barnes and Rude took position about 3,000 feet higher, while Pattle and Lancaster climbed another 1,000 feet higher and on the starboard flank. At one point, the Lysander pilot launched a signal flare, indicating danger, and then turned east at low altitude. Pattle and Lancaster dived down to investigate but failed to spot enemy aircraft. Wickham Barnes and Rue were nowhere in sight either. But then, Paddle saw seven Italian Breda BA-65s in two separate flights pursuing the Lysander. The Italian aircraft belonged to the 12th Assault Group. They were led by Captain Antonio De Loro and their task was to attack a concentration of British armored vehicles in Bir Shefferzen area. They were accompanied by Fiat CR-32 biplanes of the 160th Squadron, led by Captain Duilio Fanali. The Breda spotted the British Lysander and were now trying to shoot it down. Wickham Barnes and Rue attacked the Italians, and one Breda was soon going down in flames.
but the CR-32 fighters intervened and Sergeant Ru was shot down and killed, either by Captain Fanali or by Maresciallo Romolo Cantelli, depending on the source. Wickham Barnes was also engaged by the CR-32s and he was able to claim one shot down. But eventually, his airplane was hit, either by Cantelli or by Fanali. The Gladiator was damaged out of control and Wickham Barnes bailed out. Patel was chasing two Bredas, and as he was approaching, he noticed them dropping their bombs, probably to increase their speed. Their speed did increase, and Patel was now watching them creep away. But then, the Italian bombers turned north, and Patel used this mistake to cut inside their turn. Although two of his machine guns jammed almost immediately, he still achieved hits and the Breda slowed down. He achieved more hits in the starboard engine and the Italian aircraft dropped lower and lower until it eventually crash landed. Johnny Lancaster, Patel's wingman, had gun jamming issues and he was wounded in the shoulder while defending from CR-32 fighters. He was able to disengage. As he was pressing his wound with the other hand, he held the stick with his knees. He managed to land back just before losing consciousness. Patel turned east towards his home base, but he soon discovered that the Italian strike aircraft were heavily escorted by Fiat CR-42 fighters. Patel spotted five Fiat biplanes diving towards him from northeast. He pretended not to see them, but then pulled an evasive maneuver at the last moment. The Fiats then set up for individual passes. Italian pilots repeated their diving attacks in a pattern and they climbed back to altitude after each pass. Patel remained defensive, but then one pilot made a mistake and turned directly in front of his gladiator. Patel opened fire from close range and hit. The Italian fighter spun towards the desert and crashed. The remaining fighters broke away and Patel headed towards Egypt. After surviving the attack from five Italian fighters, Paddle was now heading towards his home base at 1,000 feet, but about 20 miles from the Egyptian border, he spotted 12 CR-42s and three BA-65s. The Bredas attacked him first, but they didn't come too close and Paddle had no problems avoiding their attacks. They abandoned the area, but the 42s now took over. They were using the safe dive and zoom tactics as the previous group. 
all of Paddle's guns were now jammed, so his only hope was to avoid the attacks and try to head towards the east as much as possible. The Italian attacks lasted for about 15 minutes. Paddle noticed that one of the Italian pilots was far more accurate than the others. Paddle's gladiator was eventually hit and he had no choice but to bail out at about 400 feet of altitude. After landing, he first moved in the wrong direction, but he reached the Egyptian border and was found by British troops the next day. It is believed that Paddle was shot down by Tenente Franco Lucchini, who would eventually be credited with 20 individual and 52 shared victories. Pete Wickham Barnes was also able to walk to friendly territory and was picked up. After the loss of four gladiators, the 80 squadron was eager to fight back. It was noted that large formations of CR-42s were patrolling a triangle between El Adem, Sidi Omar and El Gobi regularly, twice a day. This was an opportunity to set up a trap. On 8 August, 13 British fighters flew to the zone, divided into four subflights. The first one flew at 8,000 feet and acted as a bait. He was followed by subflight number 2 at 10,000 feet, then number 3 at 12,000 feet, and finally subflight 4 at 14,000 feet. Pat Paddle was leading the subflight 4 and he was effectively in charge of the entire formation. The gladiator formation crossed the border at 6 pm and then turned north. As they were approaching Bir El Gobi, Paddle spotted 27 Fiat CR-42s in 9 sections of 3 aircraft at 6,000 feet. They were flying in an easterly direction. Paddle was able to maneuver the entire formation behind the Italians and ordered subflights 1 through 3 to attack. All three CR-42s of one Vic and two of another went down in flames before the rest of the Italian formation realized they were under attack. As Paddle dived into attack with his own subflight, the Italians broke the formation and an enormous dogfight developed. Each pilot was fighting for himself. Paddle was able to maneuver behind one Fiat and fired several short bursts from about 50 yards. The CR-42 went down spinning and crashed. He then spotted three Fiats and attempted to attack them, but they dived almost vertically towards the ground and he chose not to follow. Paddle was about to head towards the border, but then tracer rounds past his wings. He kicked his rudder and spotted a single CR-42 attacking him from below.
Pat was able to turn his gladiator and put himself behind the Fiat. He fired the burst from about 30 yards and the enemy fighter exploded. The encounter with Italian fighters was a great success for number 80 squadron and for Paddle as the formation leader. While two gladiators were shot down, the British pilots were able to claim between 9 and 16 confirmed victories depending on the source, and 6 or 7 more probables. Paddle added two confirmed kills to his total, but he also proved himself as an excellent tactician. According to the Italian sources, four Fiat fighters were lost while four more force landed. Italian pilots claimed five gladiators, all of them shared, with two more probables. For a while, Italian fighters avoided combat and gladiator pilots flew many escort missions without engaging the enemy. Paddle also flew a number of strafing missions. Pat Paddle last fought enemy airplanes in the North African theater on 15 September 1940. He was returning from a patrol with three other gladiators when they spotted 10 SM-79 bombers. This Italian aircraft was quite fast and gladiators usually had a hard time trying to intercept it, but Paddle was able to maneuver his flight into a good position. As they were approaching, Paddle realized that his air pressure was low and as a result, his guns didn't work, so he aborted the attack. The Savoyas were able to get away, but Paddle's air pressure was back. The gladiators proceeded towards the coast, where they once again spotted the Italian bombers, but this time only five of them. The Italian formations from the 46th group encountered other British aircraft, including Hurricanes and Blenheims. They suffered some losses, but claimed one gladiator, one Hurricane and one Blenheim. Paddle was able to approach the Italian formation, and he opened fire on one of the SM-79s. The fire caused the port engine to smoke, but the Italian bomber increased the speed nevertheless, and Paddle's gladiator was not able to catch up. He was given a damage credit. His total score was now standing at 4 confirmed kills and 1 damaged aircraft. During October and November, the squadron's worn-out gladiator Mark 1s were replaced by Mark 2s. Many pilots were hoping to get Hurricanes, since Gladiator was already obsolete and it was effective only thanks to the fact that Italians also relied on similarly outdated biplanes. On 18 November 1940, No. 80 Squadron was transferred to Greece, and that is the theater where Pat Paddle achieved most of his kills, but also ended his life. Circumstances of the Greek campaign and loss of official records are probably the reasons why Pat Paddle is often overlooked as one of the leading Allied aces of World War II. Don't forget to press the like button. It's almost no effort to you, but it's a huge help to the channel. Join our Patreon supporters or donate on PayPal because that's the only way for the channel to stay in business. Thank you and keep watching Showtime 112.